So, EDG versus WE, I mean, the first time we saw these guys face off, it was a best of five. Uh, and there were some hard carry performances from everybody on WE. We had two from, um, two from Shanks, who honestly is one of, I think, one of the, the better mid laners. And he, I think he carries this team very, very hard, like <laughs> Cho VV2. Um, we also had a good performance out of Elk in one of the games, um, and we also had some really good... Actually, no, Elk did two really good games. Top, if he gets his Gangplank, completely pops off, um, and LeBlanc is also a really, really contested pick for the side of WE because Shanks does a lot on it as well. So let's see how they decide to um, draft here. So we get the LeBlanc B1, that's kind of standard. We'll get the Aphelios Thresh in return. Um, and then we'll probably get something like Varus and, you know, they might even leave support to later on. But maybe we get something like Varus and a jungle and um, pick them out here. The Trundle is banned, so is the least Sin. So we're probably looking at something like Xin Zhao. Um, see, here's a Varus. Here's a Varus comes in. And then, yeah, I'd probably say something like Xin Zhao. Maybe they take Leona here, though, so it doesn't get banned in second rotation. Um, but Thresh kind of counts as Leona, but the, the goal of Leona in this kind of comp isn't to stay in lane and get counted by Thresh. It's to roam about the entire map and just kind of go crazy. So we'll see what they pick here. I mean, I'd like to see them something go Gangplank. Uh, okay, so Olaf is something else that um, was played quite a lot, especially by both of these teams. Uh, WE did pull it out. Beishang had a great game on it. Um, I think he actually stole the Baron with it which is very easy to do obviously e with true damage from the smite so we get the return of viego now personally i prefer the um viego just i feel like it's a bit more diverse um but we do have the leona ban as we presumed they'll probably ban brawn second as well um again even though thresh is on paper account a two leona leona is just too strong um in her current iteration so these now need to look to ban away things out of mid lane so maybe an oriana ban might be pretty big um rise is banned so maybe lissandra might get there we go taken off the table just because lissandra is a you know a classic counter to leblanc obviously leblanc kills can still outplay it her kit is very very unique in what it can do so she can still outplay it and play around that but oh oh so we'll we'll see we'll see where they go to So here, set ban, okay. Um, I would have expected more of a Braum rather than set, but they're clearly prioritizing set a little bit more. Here, maybe we get like another mid ban. Um, I'd say maybe something like Oriana, um, just because it can go really, really well with our comp right now. Um, but even something like a Galio could be a really good ban here. Just, okay, TF is also great too. Same lines of what I was going for with the Galio, just because it helps to protect uh, that Aphelios, which they want to get rid of. So here we'll probably see something like Syndra um, in return to um, the LeBlanc, just to make it a lot easier. I mean, Galio here would have been massive as well, due to the fact that it had counters the um, LeBlanc in lane, and they did get through bans. But, you know, Syndra's a little bit more diverse, should we say. Hey, thanks for the sub, Glacium. I do appreciate that, man. Your prime will be well looked after. Don't worry. So... From the side of EDG now, we're probably looking at something like a Kennen um, or Jace, or I mean, they might pull out uh, something like Nah. We'll see. So the Jace does get locked in, that gives them a big, strong top side. And there we see the Braum that we already kind of discussed already. Now, Braum is probably better here due to the fact that, you know, like they do want to go in. I mean, Blitz is also very good <clears throat> because they do have a lot of mobile carries like the Aphelios and the Syndra. Problem is, if you take Blitz here and you accidentally pull the uh, Thresh or the Viego, then you're going to be in for a little bit of a bad time um, unless you can burst that Viego out. So we'll probably see response. Maybe Gangplank. Who knows? Gangplank is still on the table and I mean, it is into a Jace, so it does have that trading potential in lane, or maybe the Kennen will come through for that kind of AoE protection. Uh, I mean, the Lucian is also a pick, but I, I don't really like Lucian top as much, to be honest. Like, I feel like if you've got an Aphelios on the team, you don't really need a, a Lucian. Aphelios is going to do plenty of damage anyway, so although I can see why they're going for that pick, um, you know, it's... 
Not too bad. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I don't like it personally, but I think they can still make it work. I think that is probably going to be a weak point, though, because now you've got Lucian playing into a Jace. Now, the problem with this is, obviously, um, Jace is kind of designed to burst squishies out. So we're in a little bit of a rough um, situation here now where it's going to be very hard for him to actually uh, do that. So let's just quickly get our spreadsheet set up. Um, EDG versus WE. So, let's see what they do. Now, obviously, EDG, one of the favorites um, coming into Worlds, uh, ooh, excuse me, hiccups, one of the favorites coming into Worlds this year. So, we will very much see um, how they do here. Now, the last time they faced against each other, it was a... Now, this is one thing I really like about LeBlanc, the fact that you take W first anyway. So, you lose out on nothing by putting that ward down. Really, really nice ward to see. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, um, overall, the kind of team dynamics have changed a little bit, which is what we're going to see in Worlds as well. Uh, ooh, 46 to 2,000 kills. Is he going to get it in this series? Let's find out. 46 kills over three games for somebody like Scout, I really don't think is too crazy to um, consider, to be honest. Now, this is still played on 11.15. China was a little bit behind in terms of um, when they had their semis. Oh, sorry, a little bit ahead, even. Um, whereas other regions, you know, they didn't really have uh, their semis until like 11.16 um, and their finals. I think LPL finals will be on 11.16, but either way. But if we have a look at these jungle parts, Olaf is obviously uh, solo clearing. This is because Olaf is very good at just solo clearing. He's a very fast jungler. He was one of the, before a lot of the junglers got kind of changed, Olaf was known as like the one jungler that can clear like pre-315. Um, I think it's something like 3 or 5 that he can clear. It's very, very quick. Um, obviously, there's a few nicks to actually uh, getting that clear off, such as, you know, ignoring your axes as well. They take too much time to actually collect. So if you nod clear on him and you drop low, I mean, I don't think he's actually lo low enough right now in order to get a really, really fast clear. And the thing is, he's played into a Viego, so the Viego isn't going to be able to kind of punish him. Mako does take drop very, very low, though. Ignite is used from the side of WE. They just really don't respect that level 2 in the bot lane, which is definitely a big concern. So this goes to show that one of the big ways that you actually beat this team is to take very aggressive early laners and just punish them due to the fact that they make these mistakes quite often. So the bot lane is definitely a potential um, weak spot for the side of EDG. So we can see the problem with that as well is that the Olaf was already pathing into bot lane. Now the reason he was pathing into bot lane is so that he can path to the opposite side of the Viego um, just because you know he doesn't really want to meet him. Um, especially considering mid is going to get pushed in by the Syndra um, and also the Aphelios Thresh can push bot in as well so overall this is very very risky of Olaf to even come here and he's actually potentially going to get caught we do see a TP come out from mid lane but he's just going to get pushed off of this Skull Crab we see the Syndra come down as well with their priority and Olaf is very very behind now like he hesitated massively between kind of where he went to and also this was kind of bad because he was pathing into bot lane and his bot lane conceded too much pressure early and dropped too low so he couldn't really um, make his gank route pay off so although some might say you know you know he should have you know path the opposite way I mean he's going to be meeting a Viego top and there's a Lucian top as well so the draft is very, very rough for him to do anything early, which is why, you know, I don't really like the Olaf pick and why I said the Viego pick would have just been more beneficial since you get a better mid-game spike. Um, you know, regardless of if you get ahead, like, Viego won really big team fight and he just snowballs like crazy. So he's kind of like a bruisery snowball champion, in my opinion. Even CS with the Olaf right now, Olaf is already at a tempo advantage now. And one of the biggest downsides to this is actually that Viego's pathing is a little bit rough. Purely because uh, he's pathing away from the dragon now, which isn't the end of the world. Since, you know, against an Olaf, it's very difficult to secure these early dragons. Especially because of the true damage from his E. But there is no flashes in mid. We get a uh, Thresh ult uh, Q W Lantern to get him in, sorry. 
Um, and that's a nice quick kill over to the Viego, which again, this is really, really important because this snowball is, you know, what Viego wants. So, really nice play from the Thresh to abuse the fact that Mako did not have uh, a flash here and just instantly flashed on top of him and flayed with that Lanza ready. So, really nice play out of missing, actually. And this is kind of one of the one of the big things about this lane is the Aphelios Thresh is very um, oppressive due to the fact that Aphelios can pretty much be a lane bully and with um, Thresh by his side that's really really good. Now what they're doing is they're just playing to keep GG out of the game as much as possible. Lucian was going to TP to his tower anyway from the looks of it. So you just use that TP just to get him off that camp just so that the Viego doesn't lose anything to this Olaf. Which is super important, considering that, you know, if uh, Olaf does fall behind, he's going to be a little bit on the useless side. Now, one of the important things to note is the way that Beishang is actually pathed here. Um, he will be able to path into this bot side of his jungle and get level 6 off his blue buff. Um, and then, obviously, he can translate that into potentially threatening a um, dragon play with his level 6 or he can threaten bot lane uh, potentially who you know have already shown to be making big mistakes now he's not going to be able to get there and punish before uh, Mako gets his uh, flashback so that is something they're going to have to consider but this Viego uh, this uh, virus is very aggressive in this situation so we'll see what happens here Syndra going to try and get a uh, stun off so she does manage to get it but unfortunately there just isn't any follow up the Aphelios really doesn't want to give up this um, basic free, well, freeze that he has going on here. He wants to keep it for as long as possible. So I don't even think him hitting these minions here are a good thing. Um, because he should have held them there so that it's slow push in. Um, but maybe they're doing that so that they can get priority for this dragon. We'll have to see what Beishang wants. Um, and then we'll be able to tell um, you know, what he's going for. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Overall, pretty solid game so far. WE are pulling ahead quite a lot though, um, especially in this bot lane. Currently 25 CS up in ADC. That's about 5 CS short of two entire kills just in farm difference. So, I mean... They're very much uh, in a very good position right now. So... Right now, this dragon is still available. Like we said multiple times, the thing with this dragon is you can't really make plays for it early until you've got your smite upgrade. Because your smite is the same as the enemy jungler's at, what, 450, and it's really not enough to be able to force anything. Now, if you're Olaf, you can potentially force it, but he's too far behind in terms of overall tempo. As we can see, he's about 300 gold behind. Now, that is basically a kill. Um, but we'll see what happens here. He GG is walking towards this uh, Herald as well to try and contest this, but we have a Thresh and a Syndra here. Will Thresh walk in? Oh, this could be a really, really good collapse. Uh, we do get the LeBlanc E come through, and this is going to allow the Braum passive to pop off. So Scout with a really nice E there to catch that kill. And that ends up securing them the kill and potentially this Herald, to be honest, if they decide to go with it. They do really want to look to clear out this vision, but the thing with Herald is because of how the eye opens, and especially one of the important things with the Herald, is the more you auto-attack it, the faster the eye actually opens. So auto-attack users can basically um, make the eye open multiple times, and all they need to do is basically make sure that they get the eye and the smite. We're going to get the... Okay, so they actually just jump straight on the... And Viego and just kill him and then they manage to get the Herald. They're gonna chase after Breeze right now. Scout is doing work, but Flandre is, you know, just ripping him apart as well. That's one of the things with Jace. Now they don't really need to fight here, they just have to back away. Aphelios is there. He doesn't have ultimate, but he does have um sniper and chakram, so he can basically have a lot of rage here. We see another really, really good decision from Scout though to go into the lost chapter into the um Abyssal one. 
sorry, the Sork Shoes into the Abyssal one. Because, uh, I mean, he will probably get blue anyway from... Um, well, oh, maybe he still has blue, actually. But we do see the, the replay of this. We see the Ophelios try and do things. Mako does jump and kind of get away. Like, the Lucian decides to complete the int, though. He just runs after him to get that one kill, and then he just dies. So it's really not worth it, considering you just give over more gold to Scout, who is going to be the one that's going to be one-shotting you as a squishy AD carry in this game. So, very, very greedy. Now, as we see, Scout doesn't have blue buff, but... Um, I think he's just looking to roam around the map. We do see him building into his last chapter, but he's just gone for maximum AP. So Blasting Wand and Double Amp Tome, just maximum AP. And um, he's just looking to do as much damage as possible. So Olaf is also on Iron Spike Whip. Um, but the virus is also on Serpent's Fang, which again, this was on 11.15 before Serpent's Fang got nerfed to have a massive amount of its lethality removed. So he's still very, very strong and he's got a massive early game spike. So this early game spike might actually allow him to get kills on this Aphelios. Now Breathe is just trying to do everything he can, but he just gets run down by Olaf now. This is the, the big thing. Like Lucian used that flash um, and died just for one kill. And now he's going to get punished, you know, due to the fact that Olaf also has the Herald available. So he's literally just going to push this in now, get it down to two plates, pop Herald, and it's pretty much over. Unless he decides to hold Herald... Um, and not use it so that they don't end the laning phase. Nope, he's just going to use it straight away. They're waiting for the next wave, uh, which is a little bit odd uh, because they're not in a position to continue chasing for that, uh, that next tower. So waiting instead of just popping Herald there is a little bit interesting because this is actually wasted time so that now they can get picked here by the side of WE. So it doesn't seem that, like much, but the, that... that that kind of hesitation and waiting around the play just lost them so much. Like, so much. So yeah, they just gave time to respond for no real reason. And the thing is, this play obviously came out of them rotating for them but you know it, it didn't happen because of this so i would have actually been intrigued for them to show the actual play before it happened um since you know it was it was all down to the fact that they they i, I think they waited for the next minion wave before dropping the herald but that really doesn't make sense because they were on very short time lucian was dead but they had tps for the side of wb and now Beishang's actually going to look for this dragon. Now he does have his Sundra spike already. So these dragons are just going to get melted by him. So now, you know, Sundra about 13 minutes. Which is, you know, pretty, pretty damn fast. A uh, fight going down in bot lane. Uh, who the other died? I don't actually know. I think that was... Uh, I'm, not, I'm not too sure actually. I think that was the Aphelia. So I'm not entirely sure. So... We get the blue buff gifted over to Shanks, which is pretty good because uh, Syndra's aggression in lane is very, very easy to output due to the fact that her Q is not a targeted ability. Now, you see a lot of things in regards to this that you think, wow, I can't believe that didn't happen. But when it comes to minion aggro, um, non-targeted abilities won't draw the aggro. Um, so what you can do is you can actually use your Q in order to get a massive amount of aggression off inside the lane and not actually interfere with your wave so much. And this is why Syndra is such a power pick in competitive play and has been for a long time because it's only targeted abilities that will draw that minion aggro if they have another target that's a higher priority so it's really really important so here we can see that you know they're just trying to kind of trade in lane i mean varus is on one item on i mean it is serpent's fang which does give a massive amount though so this actually gives them the opportunity that they can fight in this time due to the fact that it's okay for them to fight here because they've got a full legendary item on top of the enemies so very very good um itemization considering he did kind of fall behind slightly more in that early game it's a very, very close um, prediction, though. And the game is also very, very close right now. So we do see Beishang walking up to try and push the Jace away, but the Olaf is actually here. So if Flandre could jump on him, he can't, unfortunately. But Scout is also walking up, so... 
Unfortunately, nothing will come out of it. So, I mean, a little bit of a skirmish, you know, it's not going to be enough to actually have a big impact. I mean, the second Herald is spawning, so Aphelios will probably look to push this wave in and then try and rotate into the Herald and see if he can kind of fight around this. He is on a mythic item. He's got his shield ball now, which is a huge power spike for Aphelios, um, especially the amount of uh, life seal you get out of it. So it means now that a lot of this poke that comes out of EDG will be offset if there's something for and ilk to actually hit so we just see this herald go away they're probably going to use this to um potentially pop and um, this top tower and just kind of make up that um tower difference but we do see that jace is in the mid lane manages to get a empowered kill off onto the aphelios but aphelios does respond with his ultimate which is i mean it does junk scout out but i think it was a little bit wasteful um Considering Scout is playing LeBlanc and he can obviously use his W to just get back super, super fast. So he also has tier 2 bits. His build is very good right now. He's on a huge penetration spike. So if he gets on top of any of the squishies, they are going to die. Now, Avilios does have a shield bow. So he's not going to die instantly, but the rest of the team. Ah, now again, WE with a very, very convincing early game here. Um, they're definitely playing the early better. Except for bot, I mean bot, you know, they do look ahead now, but those early trades were really, really bad. So Varus just want to get wants to get out of there as quick as possible. But there's no vision on anybody in the game right now, so if he doesn't get out, he's kinda of screwed. So, at this point in the game, um, if I'm EDG, I'm just waiting for Scout to get one more item. That's it. The Jace is also on a his Eclipse Spike. He's going to have his Mana Moon soon. Maybe he goes into Serildas as well for that Armor Pen. Obviously, Eclipse and Serildas are great because you get Armor Pen from um, Eclipse, which then combines with Serildas. So, it's a really, really strong combination. We do see the Syndra back away from there though, but Beishang is looking to cross map play, which is, you know, nice to see. We do get the flash out of Flandre though, so, you know, he, he can't really get away. And, you know, Olaf gets the Syndra in the top side of the map. So, you know, it was a, it was a cross play into another cross play. And now they're just going to push this top out. Bot lane need to reset. Otherwise, they're going to push open their base already. This is... Super greedy from WE. This is this is terrible. This is like game ending terrible because now they get access to Just take this tower. Oh, they're not going to If they would have just commit to that to be honest They would have got that first tower and that inhibitor will be open and available now instead WE end up getting the dragon They just converge on it as four and there's two people topside. There's nothing they can do so It's it's kind of risky. It's like I think they should have just commit to their play to be honest the Syndra was dead and they knew where the rest of them were it's a it's a very big concern so that was a potential game ending play and it was completely free for them but they decided not to go with it now obviously you don't want to um, take the inhibitor but you do want to take the tower just so that you have access to that inhibitor so then you can work on another lane and then as soon as you've got that lane as well what you can do is to end the game out you can crack both inhibitors and then either reset and go for the third one or just use your gold advantage to push the base now they are playing a bit conserved i mean this is the semi-finals and this determined if they went to worlds or not which again we know that edg did win but we don't know the context of their win which is why we're watching these games now LeBlanc has gone Banshees, which means 
She either has itemized wrong, which it's Scout, or he believes he has more than enough damage right now that he can itemize into a Banshee's Veil and get away with it. So, you know, also interesting. I mean, I do think he does have enough damage, especially considering that Banshee's Veil gives five magic pen anyway. So the fact that he's built that now means, you know, he's in a very, very strong position. We do see the Mana Moon come out from the side of Varus. Thresh tries to flay the LeBlanc, but it's just too difficult. Even if he would have got that off, it only would have popped the Banshee's Veil, but she did just jump back now. We do have the Jace poking in from the side, and they are very, very split in this fight. So, Elk, just why he stood that far up, I do not know. It just makes no sense whatsoever. Scout is going to be looking to potentially... Um, get him on the side, though, but this is going to give them the opportunity that they can keep pushing this mid-tower which you know is very good for them since once they get this mid tower popped and they get access to a lot more of the resources that we are currently holding on to because as soon as it pops they have the ability to just walk into their jungle and just take it away because what you look to do and my pen wants to load is <clears throat> as soon as what's going on okay so as soon as when my pc wants to work you get this tower gone <clears throat> you all of a sudden if you push up to prio here you can just walk into this jungle like this or into this jungle like this and you can just clear it away now once this tower is gone you can get prior to this point and then the entire jungle it's off limits to them you in ideally end up splitting the map so that now this is their kind of um sorry i'll just get rid of this so the top tower is gone so all of a sudden it's more of a case of this will be their area to farm resources and this will be edg's area to farm resources which means you know like this is why if you're in a winning position you should never be looking to say farm your own jungle and um, you should just be always looking to kind of fight to take away the enemy jungle from them and since you already have a gold lead you can opt into that fight and potentially win or push them away obviously if somebody had griefs to fight or you don't take in all the information then it can be risky but shanks is just gonna get one shot by scout like oh no that's very sad but gg flash e I mean, it makes sense. I mean, Thresh did manage to get his hook on him, but it really isn't going to matter. And now they are one person down, so they really can't siege this. Now, Shanks has been playing out of his mind in other games, but in this one, he looks a little bit weaker than before. We get the Aphelios ult come in, does a little bit of damage, really not that much, though. They're just very behind um, in terms of damage. They can now put EDG, just repeat with so... Like, they just put back so much damage to them. Um, Beishang actually forced to leave right now and it is an ocean soul so what they'll probably look to do is just get this tower and then look to just you know go and get that dragon away or maybe they just go straight to the dragon they're not actually going to siege the tower fully and we are going to see Viper it does have the ability to clear these waves very very quick due to the fact his Q doing a massive amount of damage and Flandre also helps him too Braum is getting reset off this is going to be just so he can refresh his wards and we will see a replay again the WE straight on top with a Q pop um, but you know it just wasn't quite enough the Banshee's Veil did help a little bit don't get me wrong but especially for the base stat to give I mean the, the active wasn't super useful but it did um, you know reduce a lot of the damage due to the fact that she does have MR. Now we do see her building into a Void Staff, but they do just manage to get this ocean away. And this is something that we also saw that T1 really look to do a lot. They don't mind giving the first few dragons away if they get a lead elsewhere on the map, and then they'll just get four dragons in a row. And this is super useful because it means that you don't have to flip Elder until very, very late in the game due to the fact that, you know, the five minute respawns each. So you're going to be waiting 30 minutes for that, uh, that ocean to come through. Which, you know, is quite a substantial amount of time. And in most of these games, when you have things like Olaf and LeBlanc, by the time it gets to 30 minutes, they've already snowballed the game so hard. Especially when you have people like Scout playing the LeBlanc now. GG's Olaf is okay, but I do think there's a lot of issues that he has within the jungle. Which really do hurt uh, this team quite a lot, but... We'll see what they do from here. We do have complete control over the Baron for the side of EDG, though. Scout just picks up the scuttle crab quick. 
And yeah, EDG, complete control of Baron right now. They are getting their resets off uh, so that they can come and defend this vision, but I don't know what the side of WE are actually doing. They're sort of rotating into the bottom half of this map, which they're going to get these um, camps, don't get me wrong, which, you know, um, the Viego has been starved for camps by quite a lot this game, but they need to be getting control of this Baron, like this, this Baron control that EDG have managed to get is crazy the entire like area is lit up and they just haven't really done anything for it we do see that scout is running that zombie ward in his tree which is a super underrated rune um, being able to give vision every time you take vision is super important especially on assassins when you're going to be going that sweeper to try and you know sweep a brush see if they know where you are and then you know try and assassinate one of the carries now we do see this come through elf wastes his ult though leblanc just instantly jumps back he is on red white though so he does have the ability to do a large amount of damage but we can see the scout just jumping over and just trying to be as aggressive as possible um they are pushing down mid so they have priority inside mid lane now but scout is just going to instantly go push top up there is a control ward in that brush so they will know if he's ever in there but overall uh fine so the replay came in here Oh, Olaf did get caught, but again, his ultimate is just kind of a get out of jail free card. And I think that's actually, this does suit GG quite a lot, actually, because, I mean, he does have a tendency to kind of int it a little bit, kind of run it down. So, this does help him like, quite a bit. Just having that ability to instantly ult and get out. So we do see a stopwatch come out from the Olaf as well. So even if he does come in any kind of like major danger, he's just going to be able to use it instantly. Now the problem is for the side of EDG now, they need to really, really look to start closing this game out because Aphelios is near on his uh, Infinity Edge spike, which as soon as he gets that, he's going to be outputting a massive amount of damage. The burst that he's going to output is huge. But he does have his collect now. We do see two items come through for the majority of um, players at the moment. Um, we see Lucian's on three items. You know, three items for some as well. Like the top laners are on three each. Uh, mid laners are on three almost each. I mean, the Syndra is slightly behind because, you know, she has died twice. And Scout has been very, very influential in the win of this game so far. Five out of the seven kills participation. So Syndra does manage to get a nice E, which the Aphelios does manage to chain off, but unfortunately Varus does use his cleanse there, so he doesn't get caught by it. Now, WE are walking up um, as if they want to fight here, but they're really not in a position to fight. The, Le the Lucian is about to get one shot as well by LeBlanc inside the jungle. She's just kind of walking about, seeing what she can do. So again... Popped another ward, a blue trinket ward went down, but that Jace poke damage is massive. Now, he, Jace has been a massive factor in these team fights, and the amount of poke that he's outputting is absolutely huge. We do see Scout try and get on top of missing and just try and one pop him, but not quite. So, what they're going to do? Oh, again, this Jace poke. There's no way this Jace gets through into the next bands, to be honest. It's just really not happening. So, we do see an ult from Varus onto Beishang. They do manage to lock him up, but not quite enough, to be honest. So, they are just going to rotate onto this dragon. Again, it's up in 13 seconds. And again, it's a second ocean. This is just going to give them so much more regeneration when they're on the map. That it's going to be very hard for WE to actually keep up with their rotations. Especially considering Jace poke. It's going to be poking them out massively. Now, WE did get the first two dragons. Don't get me wrong. But they're really not in a position where they can go for this one now. It's just way too risky for them to actually go for it. Considering, you know, they're so far behind and they're going to have to contest an Olaf with East Smite, so. But they are taking this time to get vision control of Baron again. Which is nice to see. We're going to see Scout jump over, pop the uh, Banshees, and then we'll see Jace do a ton of damage. So there we go, there's the Banshees pop, we're going to wait for the chains, and then Jace just comes in and finishes a kill, so... As you can see, this combo is crazy, and honestly, Shanks is having a very bad game this one. I mean, he is against Scout, who is one of the best mid lanes in the world, don't get me wrong. Hey, how's it going, Annabelle? How's your day, man? How's your uh, New Worlds release? I can't remember what time it was at, but... 
So we see LeBlanc has her Void Staff finished as well now, which again is giving another five magic penetrations. So as you can see, um, she has a massive amount. A 28 from just her boots and Mythic bonus, and then six from uh, the Ludens, which is 34 more than base MR. She's gonna be doing true damage to anybody now. And that's without the Void Staff actually reducing by a percentage. So even if they have built MR, which to be honest, nobody has since she's the only AP on the team, but in a very, very good position. You still have to buy it. I don't, I don't even know, what, what is it? New Worlds, what? I've never even heard of that game before. We do see a fight potentially. Mm, not quite. So as we can see, the amount of damage that I'll put in Viper on this virus. An MMO from Amazon. Oh, I think I have heard of that. I think I have heard of that. I've already got too many MMOs in my life with one. I'm not going to cheat on my MMO, bro. Like, come on. I still need to get max XP. So they do just back away from the Baron. I mean, it's pretty ballsy that they started it, but they're really not in a position to. Now, the thing is, for WE this game is, if uh, EDG get the Baron, then they just lose due to the nature of their team comp. But Scout is not willing to let them go easy. He does manage to get the ult onto the Philios, but the instant cleanse means that he doesn't die. The amount of HP the Beishang is on is on so low, but they will just go for the Baron. Uh, also nearly gold in two days in Apex. Nice man. I need to play Apex again at, at some point. Probably after Worlds just because I'm kind of busy until then. But I think my peak on Apex was uh, gold one. Oh no. Uh, is it gold three? I don't know. It, it was one away from platinum. But then the game just got way too hard because I was playing with platinum players already and we get like like master tier players or like diamond players against us and we were like oh god like there just weren't much we could do yeah i got gold one it was terrible Ooh, so we see scout he's now got the double the double blasting one that's a fat 120 ap going over and um, to him which is going to help a lot more considering the amount of penetration he has now 1100 more gold is going to get him is uh, Rabadons which I feel like at that point the game is pretty much over considering you know LeBlanc is such a big threat now LeBlanc used to also be a very kind of early game oriented pick but not as much anymore now oh I love to see it that we do see out of the brawn we see the warding at uh, the wardstone very nice to see. So he's not really getting much out of it for now. All he's really giving him is um, control, like an extra control ward. Well, it's giving him that control ward slot as something useful. But as soon as he ticks 13, that's going to be giving him a massive amount of stat boost. Going to get a ton of haste. Um... And obviously it's also got the active where you can put down four normal wards and two control wards. So Braum alone will be able to literally keep this entire map lit up. Which is why it's so good. So we do see them just pop open this mid inhib and they're going to get the bottom inhib too. Um, you know, it's looking kind of over for the side of WE. I think LeBlanc's going to TP back in and they're just going to look to end the game out here. They're so strong. They do have Baron buff and they're going to have two waves fully Baron buff pushing in. So LeBlanc just quickly Ws just to get that Baron buff onto the minions. And now they're just slowly pushing. There is still a dragon to take, but they have such a big poke comp right now, especially with the Varus and the Jace, that they can literally just keep the siege up with the Baron and just keep poking out when they ever try to kind of walk up to clear the waves we do get an ult from the virus but it does get Mikhail by Thresh which is pretty unfortunate but we are just gonna see okay so Beisheng jumps in tries to do something uses his ult to get out is he gonna burn to death he just about lives but the Aphelios gets a massive combo off Jace manages to kill him though and GG manages to stop watching time so 
we do still see they're continuing to push. I mean, they do still have Scout and Flandre. Like, they could just keep going. Oh, he does miss his gate, though, with his Q. So they're just going to back off and use his pressure from the double in here to go and get Dragon. This is going to be a third Dragon, but I really like to see the Jace is actually clearing away the enemy uh, camps right now, which is very good. So... Oh, he misses the combo, unfortunately. That would have... I'm pretty sure that combo would have potentially one-shot Beishang there, to be honest. Are they going to potentially give this um, dragon away? I mean, I mean, at this point, we could just see a TP into the base by the Jace and just go and end on his own at this point. They do have supers inside that base. They will get the dragon, but it really doesn't matter too much. Flandre just buys his time and just kills Shank's scout as well. Massive, this game. They just managed to kill him off, and then that's going to be the game. We're probably going to see them all walk up. Jace is going to reset, spend his gold, TP back, and then they're just going to siege the base. Without Beishang or Breathe, they can't defend against this. This is going to be the end of the game for uh, game number one. 36 minute game, slightly um, on the longer side, coming towards our 40 minute mark. Where, you know, gathering storm users are really, really loving life right now. Braum tries to ult and just finish him off, doesn't manage to get it, but. The problem is Syndra and Aphelios do have massive wave clear, but Scout just jumps on Shanks and he is having a terrible day. And then they're just going to end the game out. So that was uh, game number one for the side of uh, EDG. So let's move straight on to game number two um, and see how uh, see if they can continue this.